I've been doing videos a while now, and um, a lot of people give me, uh, you know, some people are curious about it, some people just give me a little bit of flack about it. Um, some people call me crazy names, they say that I'm in the Illuminati, or I'm this, or I'm that, which I'm not. Um, and they talk about the clock, and um, they wonder why many times it's set to 1111. I've answered some people, and I tell people, I explain things. I explain that the cube is a, a 3D hologram of my wife and I, that the lamp was just discount furniture that I got. Um, you know, sometimes I put little clues here and there because I want people to dig a little deeper and search more because in life we're meant to. You know, that's the mystery. That is, it's, um, we need to dig, we need to look, we need to seek more, you know? Um, and that's really what 1111 is all about. So that's why I put it up there on the old clock. And that's why it's there a majority of the time, because to me, it's a wake-up call. And this video is going to be a wake-up call to all of you, because I'm gonna share some things today that um, are, well, I would say, keys, if you will, to the kingdom, all right? In scripture, they say that the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy, okay? It's right thinking, that's what righteousness means. A lot of people don't even know what it means. Right thinking, proper judgment, peace, and joy. And that is pretty much the, uh, you know, the kingdom, if you will, the heaven that we all are looking for. And 1111 is kind of a herald of sorts to get us there. It's a, uh, it's a reminder. It's, it's one of those numbers that, you know, gets you to pause and think. You've probably heard the expression, it's 1111, make a wish. And a couple of my plays, because I'm a playwright too, um, that's how I started writing. And um, a lot of my plays, the characters would, you know, mention and reference 1111. They'd say, 1111, make a wish. Well, why is that? What is so interesting about this time? Is it something miraculous? Is it something that um, we all need to look into? Is it more than just four numbers? I think it is. And I think today you're all going to find out why. And I believe that you are all going to have an amazing time doing so. So buckle up, people, because we're about to enter the 1111 Phenomenon Zone. Okay, so um, let's start off with uh, let's start off with what the numbers mean. Okay, I'm born on June 11th, which I think is fantastic. The name Jacob Israel. If you know anything about um, you know the scriptures, Jacob Israel is um, it's a pretty famous name in many faiths, not just the Judeo-Christian faith, but also um, the Muslim faith. Jacob Israel is synonymous with um, a changed life. Um, Jacob. It was this shepherd that along the way in his journey, you know, he did a lot of manipulating. He did a lot of, uh, you know, wheeling and dealing to try to get ahead because he really wanted that, 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 that kingdom. Jacob was one that would do anything to get him. And he ended up getting there. And that's why the second part of his life, he was called Israel because he overcame. And that's what each and every one of you are going to do today. You're going to learn how to overcome that firstborn carnal nature that is us. Another name for the ego. And 1111 is the gateway there. Or so many people say. Okay, it is the most intuitive number. Now listen, if you're not into numerology, no big deal, you know? If you're not into any of that stuff and you think that that's, you know, somehow some terrible thing, forgive me. Um, I just wanna show you that this number 11 and 1111 in, in general is found in many, 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 many faiths and many trains of thought. Like for example, numerology, the number 11 is associated with faith. How about them apples? It symbolizes the potential to push the limitations of the human experience into the stratosphere and the highest spiritual perception. That number 11 
is that transition from the mortal to the immortal. It is, it's, it's a symbol. It's a wake-up call. It is also, the number 11 is also a palindrome. No matter how you look at it, it's the number 11. You can even take the number 11, you can flip it upside down. Still 11, 11, right? You put the 11 and the 11 together and you get what they call two master numbers. And they basically become these keys that unlock potential. That's why many people take the time to make a wish. Speaking of master numbers, uh, the number 11 being one of them, the other one is 22 and the other one is 33. So these are the three master numbers in uh, numerology that mean something uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting because there's an 11 between each of them, which is why this number has been for thousands of years held to be of spiritual significance. And that's why I think that um, many people say that it is the gateway until um, the gateway to enlightenment. You know, what's interesting about this 1111 is um, in my life personally, I, uh, I see it everywhere. You know, when I turned 29 to 30, when I kind of had, you know, if you want to call it kind of an awakening or I started to think that there was more to life than, you know, what I was, you know, seeing, touching, and tasting and feeling, uh, more to life than what I was told. I believe that there had to be a purpose, there had to be more. And so around 30 or so, I, uh, I started seeing this 1111 everywhere. I'd see it on receipts. Um, I'd see at the gas station, you know, I'd be filling it up and I'd stop and it'd be 1111. Um, I'd look at the time and almost always I'd see those numbers. And I know a lot of you out there are doing the same thing. I know that you're seeing it again and again and again. And see, the weird thing is, is within the last year or so, two years or so, I've been almost haunted by it again. So much so that I started incorporating it in my work. I actually even, um, even in my novel, you know, the lead character, Thomas, uh, I'll just read you, I'll read you a little something from it. Looking at the clock tower, Thomas notices the hands of the great timepiece. It is 1111. This is a time that haunts him. It is a time that has haunted him for years, as if these numbers are trying to tell him something. However peculiar the time, the bell tolls because the end of the funeral service is near. I find that to be poetically beautiful because 1111 signifies the end of the funeral service. Now, I didn't really uh, do that on purpose, I don't think, or maybe I did, I don't know, but I think that it's wonderful because the funeral is um, significant when we're looking at that mortal man, you know, that mortal man, if you will. Um, Lazarus, for example, in um, John chapter 11, verse 11, hmm, look at the timepiece, Lazarus was uh, risen from the dead in 1111, which I think is fantastic. There are, now this is something that really is fascinating, you know, there were 11 uh, apostles, you know, 12 disciples, but one betrayed, but 11 did not betray him. 11 is also an hour of utmost urgency. It's the 11th hour, if you will, right? Many, many uh, holy men pray at the 11th hour. Jesus prayed at the 11th hour. At the 11th hour, the gardeners were called to go and reap the harvest, right? At the 11th hour. It's significant because it is the last moment in time to basically finally live your life. It is the 11th hour, people. And that's why I've kept that time on my clock for so long because it is time for us all to wake up. Now, do you know that the uh, First World War ended at the 11th hour on the 11th month and the 11th day? The 11th day of the 11th month and the 11th hour, World War I ends. It's pretty significant, right? Of course, 9-11, 9-1-1, right? We see that number 11 
in many, many, many aspects of our lives. And it is very significant. So why are so many people seeing it all the time? Well, November 11th, 1111, is known as Remembrance Day. There are also 11 um, players on many different teams, whether it's cricket team, American football team, or um, field hockey team. And of course, the very first mission to the moon, first man mission, whether that really happened or not, up for debate, you know? Maybe I'll do a video on that someday. It's something that really fascinates me. But Apollo 11 was the first manned spacecraft, supposedly. You know, in the Bible, Joseph had a, uh, he had a dream, too, of um, his 11 brothers that would bow down and worship him. And he was the 11th child of Jacob, which I think is a wonderful thing. Eleven, eleven is um you know in life we get these little um we get these little symbols we get these little uh these little nudges these little you know reminders hey it's time to look for more it's time to dig deeper it's time to live for more i don't share a lot of uh you know my faith with all of you because i don't really think that i need to come on here and tell you what you should believe and shouldn't believe because i believe that uh the time has come where you don't need to go door to door and say no the lord it's the 11th hour, after all, because this truth is written on everyone's heart. And the question is, when the 11th hour comes and that 1111 flashes before your eyes, are you going to remember that that is a wake-up call for all of you? It is time to take hold. It is time to seek more. In my life, I have found that um, faith, which... Um, uh, there's a great passage that says that it is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of that which is not seen. Now, let's, let's think about that for a second. Faith is the evidence of something that you don't see. So it's the evidence. So if you have faith that your life is going to get better, that's evidence for you that it will. If you have faith that you are going to you know, change your life and make your relationship more rich and more wonderful than it's ever been, that is evidence that it's going to happen. If you have faith that you're going to be able to get through this hard time, that you're going to be able to get out of debt, that you're going to be able to overcome that mountain that's standing in your way, that faith is evidence that you are going to get there. It's the substance of the things that are hoped for. Faith. It's, um, well, with it, all things are possible. Not just some things. All things. And what is faith? Right? Well, when bad things happen, people say a lot. They go, oh, I knew that was going to happen. And why is that? Because you had faith it would. So I want people to wake up to the possibility that when good things happen, it's because, hey, I had faith it was going to happen. Just like the reason you're here today. I had faith long ago that one day many people would start to get to know me. And they would start to find some of the things that I share and that it would make a difference, hopefully, in their lives. That I had faith that it would happen. And that's why I knew it would happen. That's why I wrote about it happening long before it did. And here it is, right around the same time that I wrote about years ago. People, you are more than you know. You are more than you give yourself credit for. And this world, right, there is more to it than you believe. It's not just about what is, you know, before your eyes or something that you can hear or something you can taste or touch. String theory says that there are not just, you know, a, a three-dimensional world that we live in, but there are actually 11 dimensions. That's right. And do you want to know what the 11th dimension is, according to string theory? 
time. So for all you people, you know, that have wondered why do I keep that 1111 up there, it is because I want you to say why. And I want you to maybe open that door to the possibility that there is more. Maybe, perhaps, you'll find that the life that you're living right now is just the first step. It's just like Jacob in the beginning. You know, there was that struggling, there was that wrestling, that hardship. But you walk through that door, that 11-11, right? You walk through it at the 11th hour, because now is the 11th hour, people. I'm telling you, now is the time. Now is the time to say, teach me the truth no matter what the cost. I don't have to tell you who to ask that to. All you have to do is have faith that if you want it and you ask for it and you seek it, you will find it. And I know that when you do find it, you will find that your life is indeed more beautiful than you ever imagined. What you are presently going through, your sufferings right now, are nothing compared to the glory that is going to be revealed after the 11th hour comes to an end. So in any event, um, this week I wanted to talk about some other things, but I'm going to save that for my next video. It's going to be a whopper. And um, I hope you do subscribe. And I do hope, click that bell, like I told you, please. And um, remember, your life is more than just the, uh, you know, the rigmarole that goes along with the uh, everyday rat race that they call life on this planet. Your life has infinite possibilities. And the 1111 is there to remind you to make a wish, to say a prayer, and to seek more. I love you all, and um, I guess, you know what? I just want to give you all a hug, so there you go. There's a hug for you. And I will catch you next week, same time, same channel. And um, 